Welcome back, so happy to see you again. And two months ago, I made a video about using both Notion and Obsidian as the ultimate combo, and it's becoming one of my most popular videos right now. But I'm not using Obsidian anymore. I'm using Reflect instead, together with Notion and Google Tasks. So in this equally concise video, I'll show you how you can combine both the strengths of Notion and the strengths of Reflect. So let's start with Notion. Nothing has really changed here since the previous episode. It's still this giant sidebar, which you can have some particular notes, have some particular databases. You check in and update there. And in my case, a lot of things had to do with YouTube. I create new pages inside that database in order to check the statuses and see where I can record from and so forth. It has a lot of formatting options. You can have a web clip which saves it automatically, it's available everywhere. You can collaborate with it as Notion AI, so you can do various kinds of things that you never thought you're looking for. But it's not the easiest one to create new notes. If you look at this sidebar over here, if I create note after note after note and then update certain notes, it's not like they automatically throw out to the top, which would be the ideal option. It's also very, very slow, something I find particularly frustrating sometimes <laughs> and it also has no calendar integration it doesn't have any daily note integration it's not like you open it up and then you can immediately type on anything it's not that easy but here is where reflect comes in and complements notion it has lots of daily notes. It's today, there's yesterday, there's tomorrow, and all that stuff. From there, you can link effortlessly and so forth. And while you can link on Notion, you don't have this fancy, cool graph as you see right here, which can be visually aesthetic for some. Reflectos has integrations with both the calendars, so you can take meeting notes, and you can also do the Kindle. It's for every highlight you do on the Kindle, it automatically shows up here. Reflect also has a highlighter. When you go into any website, you start to select a few words and then click on that web clipper. It will automatically create a note where that highlight is there. Things like previously I used a Chrome extension called Liner, it's no longer necessary. It's just eliminated altogether and probably readwise too while we're at it. It also has AI, so you got two AIs for the price of one, so to speak. <laughs> and Reflect is also very, very fast and also secure. I don't know how they do that, but they managed to do it anyway, so I'm happy for it. But Reflect also has some drawbacks. The formatting, I mean, it, it's sort of good, but it could be better. It's not on Android, so if you're an Android user, you can pretty much not reuse Reflect in your phone, which kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. And also it has no databases, that has no camera board, it has no tables and so forth. So as you can see here, Notion and Reflect are in a love relationship. They complement each other so good, while Notion is the working memory of all of us. Reflect is the second brain, the journaling of all of us. And that's how I do it for. I use Notion for more professional stuff and Reflect to kind of everything else. But the downside is that Reflect costs, unless you happen to make a video about it. But you can do the same thing with Obsidian. It's not like that video got completely obsolete, not at all. And you can do the same with Mem or Locksec or any kind of gardening note-taking tools that are more networked thoughts and not necessarily this architecture type. Combining the best of both. And as always, let me know in the comments what you thought about it, which combinations you would try in terms of note-taking and so forth because it will be very interesting to hear what you come up with. I'll see you in this video right here and always remember that you are the most amazing human being alive.